Question one is asking, if you perform delay chord embedding to reconstruct the dynamics of a system from a scalar time series, and you assume that all the conditions of the embedding theorems are true, and that you did all the measurement properly, then are we guaranteed that the reconstructed dynamics have the same geometry or the same topology? We are guaranteed that it has the same topology. So part B is yes, and part A is no. Recall from 8.2, that this embedding, for example, had the same topology, but clearly, from a visual inspection, does not have the same geometry as the Lorenz attractor. The theorems of delay chord embedding only guarantee correctness of topology, not of geometry. For question two, these two shapes have similar geometry, and this is true, they're both bowls. Essentially, they have the same shape that we would see visually. Geometry doesn't care how many holes are in an object, so the fact that this colander is full of holes is not important to geometry, but the fact that they have the same visual appearance and the same geometry is what's important. So this question is true. Question three asks, if these two shapes, a bowl and a donut, have the same topology, and this is false, the donut has a hole in it, whereas the bowl does not. So the donut and the bowl have different topologies. Question four asks, if these two shapes, the coffee mug and the donut, have the same topology. This is a very famous example in topology because the coffee mug can be continually deformed without piercing any holes to a donut, and vice versa, a coffee mug and a donut have the same topology. So this is true. For question five, does a bowl and a colander have the same topology? And this is false. The colander has hundreds of holes in it, and so it has very different topology than a bowl, although they do have the same geometry. So this question is false. Question six states that you need to have direct, untransformed measurements of at least one state variable for delay chord embedding to work. And this is false. You only need to measure a smooth generic transformation of at least one state variable for delay chord embedding to work. Recall the examples in the lecture from 8.2, where you actually measured x times y minus z in the Lorentz equation. This is definitely a transformed measurement of all state variables, and that worked just fine. 